Welcome, Dawn. I'm so excited to have you on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. Um, before we get into all the detail, which I'm really excited about, because we've got so much to cover all about copywriting, but before we get there, why don't you introduce yourself, tell everybody about what it is that you do and where you got started. Yeah, I'm Dawn. I live near Seattle, Washington, on the west coast of the U.S. And I got started. I always say that I'm an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> I got started just by buying an online course that had to do with digital marketing. And one thing led to another, and I fell in love with entrepreneurship. And about eight months in, I realized, oh, I guess since I work from home, that makes me an entrepreneur. <laughs> now I have my own business where I support other uh, female entrepreneurs with copywriting and funnel building. That's amazing. Um, how did you, obviously you said that you had an online course and that just led from one thing to another, but what was the kind of passion or the drive behind it? Because there's always something that just keeps you motivated to move forward and just to take that leap of faith, so to speak. So what was it for you that just kept you going? For sure. Yeah. I, um, I originally got that online course because I was working full time in a ministry position that really was more like 24 seven was a lifestyle really. And I had a young daughter and I, she was one at the time and I wanted to be home with her. I didn't want someone else raising her. I didn't want her to be in daycare and she had been coming to work with me or I would work from home with my laptop. It was in the beginning, I had a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. and, she was one leadership changed and my position got changed and that meant um, that they forced me to put her in daycare and I wasn't okay with that. So that's what led to me looking for other options in the was with a nanny for a little bit and uh, I just made it work, but that was what my motivation was and my why and definitely was not easy, but your why keeps you going in the heart. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's amazing and she's now three, My three goodness. four soon. And uh, I don't regret it at all. Um, all the hard work, all the late nights, all the stress over figuring out technology and you know all the ins and outs of being an entrepreneur, but um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, no, I can imagine. And and what particular motivated you? Because we are going to talk about copywriting today. So mm -hmm. where did that start? Where what, what was the kind of influence for you when when it comes to copy copywriting? Funny you should ask that because that's not where I started. That online course that I purchased was actually to learn digital marketing. So mm -hmm. I learned how to build a simple website. I learned how to build a funnel. And I learned how to do Facebook ads. And from there, I was promoting an affiliate offer. And I did that for, goodness, over a year. And was one of the most successful females. It was very male-dominated in the affiliate marketing space. And was one of the most successful females. But I just lost interest in that. I lost the passion for that product. And I just wanted to have my own business. And... In the meantime, I had been uh, helping other affiliates write their ads because mm. I'm good at writing copy. And so they would pay me to write their ads for them or to fix what they had because my ads converted really well on Facebook. And so that started it. But then I was looking at business coaching. I was looking at being a speaker and a writer. I think a lot of entrepreneurs end up like me where they just couldn't figure out like what their niche really is. Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone can relate to that, I <laughs> it's so hard to figure out really where I wanted my business to be and what it would look like. I thought I would do coaching because I really liked mindset. Um, the mindset of becoming an entrepreneur, I always say saved my life. When mm -hmm. I got that digital marketing course, I was depressed and having panic attacks because of what was going on with my daughter being in childcare and being separated from her for the first time. So I was really, really struggling with life emotionally. And I buy this online course that's digital marketing, but as part of that course, the teacher, the mentor was always saying, you know, your mindset is more important than skill set. Mm. They had a ton of stuff 
to retrain your mind. And I got into that and I got into personal development. I had never heard of Tony Robbins before. <laughs> and, you know, they'd reference him and reference different things about mindset. And it just blew my mind. I started going to conferences and it changed my life. I experienced more joy than I had my entire life. And it totally turned it around. I was no longer depressed. I wasn't having anxiety. Um, I learned to master my mindset. And so all of this is going on while I'm doing these skills of building funnels and running Facebook ads. And I find that I love that more. So I'm looking at coaching and things like that. And it's just something was still off. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it took over a year of, you know, trying like different niches and trying to get clients and things like that before I realized, okay, I can build funnels like that's easy for me. And I like it because I have an artistic that design part. And then um, and I was doing that as a tech VA. So somebody was paying me just to build the funnel, not to really? write the copy or anything. And um, I would build these funnels for them and the copy would not be great. And I asked her at one point, I was like, am I allowed to, you know, like fix the copy a little bit? <laughs> and she's like, no, certain clients pay for that. And the clients that you're building their funnels for, they haven't paid for any copywriting help. And so I was like, okay. And, and that is what eventually led to what I do now for my own business is I get my own clients. And the, the fact that I can build the funnel is just a perk. You know, that's a real small, I can put together a funnel in an hour. I mean, it's mm. fast for me, but the copy really is the key. You know, funnels aren't magical in themselves. They have to have good writing. And so, and that's where I have, most of my fun. So that's how I ended up doing what I do, building funnels and then writing copy for people. That's amazing. And and I think one of the things that I'm so excited about about copywriting and about having you here with us today is the one thing that I always say is copy is not something you're born with. It's a skill you can easily learn. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are better at it than others because some have got a passion for it and others don't. And I love copy, but I find myself personally not always having the time to give that much attention to the copy. Um, now, the, the, the three things that you specifically want to talk to us about, three great, great topics, which I'm so excited about. The first thing that you want to talk to us about in particular is the headlines and the, important of mm -hmm. he the importance of headlines in particular. So why don't you take us through that and talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, your headline is so key. Really, it's the most important part. And I think for a lot of people, we actually look at the headline as an afterthought or we don't spend as much time on it. But if we think about the fact that the average adult right now has a six second attention span, it's not as long as a goldfish who has eight seconds. So you're really competing with a ton of other marketing messages, a ton of other things going on in their life. And you have to somehow break through the noise and the chaos and get their attention. And that is your headline. And if your headline isn't good, they're not going to read your first sentence, your second sentence, your third sentence. So really, you should be putting, I always say, like 90% of your time into a headline, writing a minimum of 30 to 40 headlines before you decide on one. And for the people, many of the people whom I've worked with, that's like really shocking to them. They're like, oh, no just, you know, think of something and write it down. And then I continue the rest of the ad or I write the le the rest of the landing page. And I'm like, no, you have to really focus on that first line or they're never going to read anything else you have to say. Absolutely. No. And, and from your experience, how did you find, because obviously, like I said, you know, copy is something that you learn, but then you also develop your own kind of experiences while doing copy or writing copy for yourself or for, mm -hmm. for, other, for other people. So what was your experience behind getting that headline? And I, I think you said something about you started doing your Facebook ads and you realized that there was something there happening and it, you had that aha moment as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I've always been interested in writing and it was a natural thing, but that original course that I bought, that mentor who said mindset is more important than skill set, mm -hmm. he also said if there's one skill set to learn, it's copy. And so in that time, I was reading every book I could get my hands on that had to do with copy. I was online looking at things. I was handwriting good mm -hmm. 
that was one of the best tips I got told. So uh, that's a free way to improve your copy is just handwriting good copy. And so I would do that. And yeah, it was with Facebook ads that I really started to see the difference on what a headline made. And I use the AMI headline analyzer and it gives you a score based on an intellectual score, an emotional score, and a spiritual score, um, that combination. And it gives you a percentage. So like zero to a hundred percent on the, the grade, so to speak, of your headline. And I would use that as a guide and I was running these Facebook ads and they were doing really well. My headline was maybe gotten like a 45, which is really good on the analyzer. And then I was like, I can make this better. I want to get, I was trying to get my leads under a dollar, which in the work from home space, like the business space, three to five dollars is really good. I had other people running the same offer that were paying 30 to $40 a lead. My goodness. And I had been paying two or three dollars. But I'm competitive and I was like, I can make this better. <laughs> so I changed my headline and I found this awesome headline that scored an 82 in the analyzer. So I was like, okay, I'm going to run this on Facebook and give it a go. And that same day, my leads tripled and I oh didn't change what I was, my, my budget or anything. Nothing changed except the headline and I was getting three times the number of leads. It was bonkers. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Talk to me a little bit about the EMI headline analyzer. Did I say it correctly? Is that it's the term AMI, for it? so American Marketing Institute, I think okay. it stands for. So if you Googled AMI headline analyzer, it will pop right up. Amazing, I've never heard of that before. Maybe because I'm in the UK, I don't know. <laughs> but no, that's really fantastic. So is that a tool then that you use now predominantly as well in order to look at headlines? Yes, for sure, it's free. And it's Fantastic. amazing. And I mean, you can't 100% go by any tool. Obviously, your audience will always be the best yeah. indication of what's working and what's not. But from what I've seen, and I've been using it for the last two years, it definitely makes a difference. When that score is higher, I've always seen the same trend that I'm getting more leads for less money. That's fantastic. So that for landing pages, for sales pages, all of it. Amazing. And one thing that I always get asked by my students as well is um, the obvious question is, how do I get people to open up my emails? <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, we start with a headline as well. What is your take mm -hmm. on that? That's a great question. And I also use the headline analyzer for subject lines. Fantastic. The, the biggest thing I think for subject lines is curiosity mm -hmm. and that's how you're going to get them to open the email is they have to want what's inside and you have to convey some kind of message in that subject line that makes them want to open. Mm. It leaves them like we don't like open loops. Our brains don't do well with that. So if you like, start a sentence even, sometimes that'll make it so that they open it just so their brain can finish the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of times the biggest thing is, yeah, using emotion words um, to catch people's attention and then invoking curiosity so that they click at least to close that loop in their mind. Yeah, no, that's really important. And I think it's one of the things that I find myself as well when I write my emails. Um, I love kind of using those open-ended headlines where it creates that curiosity. And it's like you say, your brain is just... It wants to finish the sentence. It wants to know, how does this end? <laughs> and it's a great yep. way just to make sure that the emails are opened and at least you capture those people's attention and then they can continue reading. Um, and I think this kind of works into our second topic, which you want to talk about as well, which, yeah, I, I really like this, but it's all about curiosity in particular, but also bullet points. So talk to us about your experience with that. Yeah, bullet points can be used um, in a variety of ways. You often see it in your landing page. So when you have your lead magnet or your freebie and you want people to get it, mm -hmm. we have bullet points to pull them into that. You can use those same exact bullet points in your Facebook ad to get them from, or Instagram or Pinterest, whatever traffic source you're using. Um, it's best if they're the same so that when they get to your landing page or your sales page, they're not like, oh, this is not the same at all. Um, 
but that that idea of having bullet points that invoke curiosity so you're not just saying like learn how to write good copy you know you're saying something that's more intriguing like learn the one simple hack i learned that tripled my conversions mm -hmm. something like that where they're like oh I, I wonder if i know that hack like so using words like secret or hack or trick um, those types of words people are like oh we all have fomo right we don't want to miss out <laughs> so you're like oh am i using that trick when i do my writing or um, you know, whoever your audience is, if you can somehow work in, if you can take yourself out of like looking at your bullet points from someone who's looking at them for the first time and say to yourself, like, if I don't know what's on the other side, so if I don't know what's actually in the freebie, do, do these phrases make me want to know what's inside? Mm -hmm. And it's a really good exercise. You can read them out loud to yourself or read them to someone else is another trick of like, does this interest you if you hear it phrased this way? Because it's not about content so much. It's, it's about hooking people. Yes. And being kind of tricky in a sense and say, you know, <laughs> like I wrote another example would be, um, I was helping someone who has a course on lower back pain and using natural natural methods, mm -hmm. not medication or surgery to heal lower back pain. And their freebie guide had, um, I think it was talking about shoes and how to, that's one of the things with lower back pain is related to what shoes you're buying. And so I changed one of their bullet points to be something like the one shopping trick you're probably missing hint, it's not your mattress. <laughs> that idea of like, huh, what would I shop for, for lower back pain that's not my mattress, which is what most people think of, mm -hmm. cause pain. And so things like that, where you're just trying to think a little bit outside of the box, where you're going to make them go, huh, I really want to know what they're talking about. Yeah. I think it's yeah, so important what you're saying. It's, I mean, just thinking for me, when I started putting my sales pages together, I started using bullet points, but oh my goodness, it was so hard to create that curiosity through those bullet points. And I think in particular, mm -hmm. because if, if, if you're sitting on the inside of your business and you know exactly what's going on, you know everything to the T of your business about what it is that you want to teach them, it's so much more mm -hmm. harder for you to come and stand and look, look at it from an outside perspective and, and just to swing it around and creating that curiosity. Um, which is why, you know, sometimes you just need a second opinion or somebody from the outside just helping you out with that because, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who's not as focused intently on the topics as you are. Um, so, no, gosh, it's, oh, it's brilliant. I love you yes. talking about it. That's an issue, actually, that comes up almost with every client I talk to because yeah. we get so close to our businesses. We get so used to speaking the lingo that we know so well that maybe our ideal clients don't necessarily say those words, but we just get so close and so many clients are like, oh my gosh, just to have this outside perspective is so helpful. But whether or not you decide to hire out and have someone write your copy for you, even if you, um, something else that I offer is a copy chat where um, I'll spend an hour and I'll go over someone's copy with them and make changes and things like that. And that, that even can be a game changer because it, it just gives you an outside perspective. I, and I even do it for me. I get other copywriters to look at my copy because I know that I'm just so close to what I'm doing. And um, even though I help a ton of other people <laughs> with their copy, I still like to have that outside perspective. So yeah, for sure. No, I it's it's fantastic and i think this kind of loops in a little bit to the last topic which i'm which i'm fascinated about because you know here i am as a coach but you want to talk a little bit about hiring a coach as well and i think it's not just to do with copywriting in particular but it can be used in all entities of your business and your life so talk to us a little bit about that yes for sure so business coaching getting someone who has been where you want to go is a game changer and i put it off for way too long starting my business you know i was um 
I started, as I mentioned, I was in a ministry position. So my husband and I were both ministers and um, received an adequate allowance for our life expenses, but not really much beyond that. And now I can sign one client and it's more than what our combined income was for a month. So kind of gives a different perspective. And so at the time when I had this very much scarcity mindset of there isn't a lot of money for this business, I bootstrapped everything. I would take courses, I would learn it myself. That's why I know how to do you know, A to Z in the funnel. I know how to do it because I figured it out and I did it myself. And the finally I was like, okay, I need coaching. I need somebody else who, you know, can put all these pieces together. And what I ended up doing was group coaching because it's less expensive. And I, I still felt like, oh, I can't take the leap for hiring a one-on-one -on -one coach. But with group coaching, I was still in my nine to five. So almost all the calls were during the workday and I missed the calls. And it's just not the same when you can't get that one-on-one -on -one help by calling in on the calls. <laughs> You know, watching replays is not the same. And so finally, after way too long, I took the step and hired a one on one coach. And literally within the first month of working with her, I had doubled the income that I made the last nine months. Like Amazing. it just skyrocketed my business to be working with someone. And and not only was it building confidence and just having someone being like, yes, you're, you're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. Um, but also having, being in that circle and getting references and, um, it just was a game changer for me. And so now I tell everyone, you know, looking back, I spent more money. If I had just invested in a one-on-one -on -one coach to begin with that, like giant scary number, I spent way more buying courses way more. And then I spent, you know, a year and a half trying to figure it out on my own and buying all these courses. I could have paid for a one-on-one -on -one coach three times. <laughs> like, honestly. So I'm a course junkie and I always tell people like, don't, don't do what I did. <laughs> if you want to fast track, if you want to do like taking the elevator to the top of the Eiffel Tower, instead of taking the stairs, hire a one-on-one -on -one coach, just take the leap. It's worth it. It's so, so, so worth it. So yeah, it's a big passion of mine. And um, I know a lot of business coaches, I, I also take on a few clients um, for business coaching, but I like the, the flexibility right now for me, since I still have a three-year-old during the day, it's hard to do coaching calls <laughs> with a three-year-old running around. Uh, so right now my focus is more on the done for you. Um, but I still love working with people and helping and like watching their business catapult forward, knowing like, knowing what they would do if they didn't have that. Yeah. So for sure, I'm a hundred percent, a huge proponent of uh, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. And for people who are looking at it like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'll ever pay for that. That's a massive expense. Hands down, it will cost you more not to. And I think in particularly these days with technology evolving, I mean, there's online courses everywhere and, and it's great. It's great to see that there's such a variety of things available for everyone in order to educate mm. yourself, and build your own knowledge. Um, but it's like you say, it's you can take the stairs up the Eiffel Tower or you can take a lift. <laughs> and I find as well when I had my first mentor, it's. I had the exact same experience as you. It's like, honestly, doors just fell open in front of me and things just started happening so much quicker. And I, I still can't put my finger on it because I know I'm a coach and I should possibly explain this better, but it's almost as though it's, it's not just the support you're getting, but it's the fact that you've got somebody behind you who for the trusts in your capabilities more than you trust your own cap capabilities and for somebody saying you can do this and you go yeah what well, yeah. if you say i can do this i can do this and it just yeah. honestly it opens up a floodgate and um and when i had a call actually with one of my students last week she's like how is this possible just you know spending an hour with you on a call and it just feels like everything is happening it's like, well, I didn't really do anything for you. You just mm -hmm. got to create that mindset where you believe in yourself. And if you have somebody like a coach standing behind you and just pushes you, 
literally and saying, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, then they start believing in themselves finally, and they start taking those leaps and steps forward. Yep, I think that's exactly, it's confidence. Yeah. It's when you've, um, I don't know if you're familiar with James Wedmore, he has a yeah. podcast too, but he um, always says the transformation happens in the transaction. Yes. Someone has taken that leap, they've invested in themselves by paying you money, and then having you to back them up. It's like that confidence, even though nothing in my skill set changed from before I had a coach to after I had a coach, it purely was my confidence knowing that she believed in me and that she was like, oh yeah, hands down, you're a rock star, like you got this. And then boom, I just, it was like um, <laughs> the story of bamboo. Oh, uh, yes. Please tell us that. Yeah. So bamboo grows underground for years. Mm -hmm. Underground for, I want to say it's like five or six years. And then all of a sudden it will grow like 30 feet in a matter of weeks. It just sprouts and goes crazy. Like bamboo is a crazy weed. If you've ever had bamboo in your yard, it's really hard to get rid of. <laughs> But it grows, it stays underground for years, and then it shoots up in a matter of weeks, and it could be like 30 feet tall. So that idea that you could be growing and learning and investing in yourself for years, like me, it took two years before I hired a coach, and then boom, my business just took off. Mm. And so yeah, I, I look at it as being like bamboo, and that's kind of what getting, injecting into your business when you've invested in yourself by hiring a one-on-one -on -one coach. Yeah, I agree. And it's such a great analogy to use. I'm going to remember that one forever. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I, I think it's one of the best things you can do. And if you're listening to this podcast now, which I'm sure you are, and you're thinking, you know what? I need to get a coach. I can't just daddle around anymore, waiting, thinking about what's happening. Um, you know, just go and find somebody. Just go and figure out what's the best coach for you. If you want to get some more information, by all means, maybe get in contact with Dawn, and I'm sure she can help you get in contact with me. Um, you know, just listen to this podcast or just go and figure out what's the next step for you to take. Because rather than running up and down, or rather not down, but running up the stairs to get to the top of the Eiffel Tower, there's such an easier way for you to do that. And um, let's face it, everybody wants to get things done quicker these days. We don't want to wait around for things to happen. So mm -hmm. um, get yourself a coach and just see where that will take you. I promise you, you're not, you're not going to regret it. It is honestly, hands down, the best thing both of us have ever done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dawn, thank you so much. I think um, just coming back to copy as well a little bit, one of the things that really excite me is um, the fact that when people want to start writing copy or their own copy, they, they like we just said, they've got to go through the stages of maybe learning how to write great copy. Um, and then mostly, mostly they go through the stage of thinking, oh, this is not really something that I'm passionate about. But then for them knowing that they can reach out to people like yourself who loves copywriting um, mm -hmm. and just who likes to, you know, do these kind of things and actually have the results at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about what you offer for your services in particular, because I know you've got some great services on offer as well for everyone. Yeah, I'd love to share about that. So I offer different funnel packages where I build the funnel. So I do the tech side of it and then I write all the copy. So whether you're looking for a landing page to offer a freebie or a sales page for a product or I do webinar funnels, five day challenge funnels on Facebook where I set up all the copy for that. As you mentioned earlier, copy takes a lot of time. Yeah. A big time suck especially if you don't feel like it's your giftedness and um, that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs who have been very successful will tell you to outsource what is not your gift and outsource the things that take so much time so yes you can learn copy you can take a year or two to refine your skills and get better at it or put your landing page up and wait to see what the results are or you can take that fast track. I'll, uh, I'll give you an example of one of my clients who has been in business for 
close to 10 years and in the online space for a long time. And she was just struggling with getting leads and sales. And two things were happening. So her landing page was converting at about 7%. So seven in every 100 people were opting in. So we changed that up and within the first day, her landing page was converting at 60%. Oh my goodness. Changing the copy, yeah. It, it makes a difference. And then the other thing that we did with her, I also helped her with her Facebook ads and um, the way, not even the ad copy, we didn't change, but just the, the way that the ad was set up. The, if you're familiar with ads, you know, you can do brand awareness, traffic engagement conversions. She was doing engagement or I think she was doing traffic ads mm -hmm. instead of conversion ads. And I changed that. I set up a new ad and she had had, I want to say like 400 people come to the landing page from the traffic ad with like five conversions. And once I switched the ad and changed it to a conversion ad and just optimized some of those settings, she had, she was getting $1 leads. So I spent $11, she had 11 leads and she had spent hundreds of dollars and had five leads. Goodness. So even just changing how you're doing your ads can make a massive difference on how many people are opting in on your landing page. Yes. So, but I love seeing like going from seven to 60%. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, that is, that is an incredible result. My goodness. Mm -hmm. no, that's really fantastic. So um, what we'll do is obviously we'll link um, Dawn's services into the show notes at the bottom. So you can just get it at the bottom there. Um, and Dawn's got some amazing um, services to offer and anything from one-to-one -one coaching, Facebook packages, um, you know, funnel services. My gosh, she's done it all. She's like she said, she's done all the work. She knows how to work it. Um, so if you, if you have any questions or if you'd like to get in contact with Dawn, by all means, go down into the show notes, get the link there and get in contact with Dawn. Dawn, thank you so, so much for your time being here with us. I think I'm so excited now. Um, I don't think we're going to stop you. talking. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome to anything, get to share. Oh, no, gosh, anytime. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience? Anything else that might pop in mind? The one thing I like to share at the end when I'm talking with entrepreneurs is just to have fun. Yes. What held me back in my business for, for so long was fear. And I made an intentional choice to replace my fear with fun. And when I hired a coach, that happened at the same time. <laughs> but uh, I became very intentional about having fun in my business. I didn't, I was tired of it being the source of stress of trying to eke out every penny and every dollar and make money. And I just started having fun and not being filled with fear. So that's what I always tell people now is trade your fear for fun. Just Absolutely. Fun. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I couldn't say anything to add to that because it is just so true. Um, I think that's a different topic. We can even talk about that one on the next podcast. <laughs> I would love to. I love chatting about mindset. <laughs> Dawn, thank you so much again for taking the time to be here with us. Mm -hmm. um, I, re I really look forward to hearing from each and every one of you listening to this podcast or watching the video. If you would like to add any comments below, please do so. Reach out to Dawn if you've got any more questions about copywriting or any of the other services she's offering. And I'm sure she'd be more than happy to help help you out. Dawn, thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll yes, definitely be you. in touch very soon again. It too. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.